Now, if you like guys that can generate their own offense, then this episode is for you because today I will be covering the best isolation scorers in the 2022 NBA draft. So find out who excels in scoring in one-on-one situations on the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. All right, this is the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, your daily NBA draft podcast. I am Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board and the founder of NBADraftJunkies.com. Now, I have spent the majority of this basketball season in Europe. I was scouting and evaluating the top international prospects, not only for the 2022 NBA draft, but for 23, 24, and beyond. But this episode has nothing to do with the European players. This episode is all about guys that can get buckets, create buckets on their own. But before I get into it, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Check out prizepicks.com and use the promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. All right, now while researching this podcast, I pulled up some advanced stats on isolation scores. And the same five or six names came up in the following category. Points per possessions, field goals, field goals made, field goal percentage, and points. Now, there were a ton of, uh, I shouldn't say a ton, but there were several other players that aren't considered NBA prospects that made the list. But as far as the guys that are ranked in my top 60, the names that kept coming up, it was pretty consistent. So I'll start with my choice, the guy that I think is deserving to be the first player selected in the 2022 NBA draft, which we are now about 16 days away. Man, I I, I can't wait. I mentioned it yesterday. I'm looking forward to getting on with this class. I've been talking about the same guys for almost 12 months now. And I don't want to get to the point where I'm starting to over evaluate and just start really nitpicking. And so I'm just looking for for the draft. It's my favorite holiday. It's one of my favorite days of the year. But 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 don't tell my wife that. But anyway, the player that I think should be the first pick is Paolo Bancaro, the 6'10", 250 pound point forward out of Duke. I think Bancaro is going to be a star. And even though he is expected to be a top three pick. I feel like he isn't getting the love that he deserves. I think this is 2017 all over again when Jason Tatum fell third overall. But let's just talk about Bancaro in isolation situations. What makes him a difficult matchup in isos is his combination of strength, footwork, ball handling, and his offensive creativity. Now, when it comes to isolation scoring, he prefers the ball on the left side of the floor. Now, usually most right-handed players want the ball on the left side of the floor so they can drive middle. Well, in Bancaro's case, he loves the ball on the left side of the floor. He loves to drive to the baseline. And when he's driving baseline, he has these broad shoulders, and he's he's a strong guy. So he usually can just kind of bully his way to the rim. But if the defender cuts him off, he loves to spin back middle, and by the time he spins back middle, he's at he, he's at the basket for a nice, soft touch shot. But what also makes him really good in isolation is that he's a good face-up shooter, right? So he ranked as one of the best shooters in the nation on jump shots inside the three-point line. So when you're guarding him on an isolation, or I like to call it an island, he has the, the jab game, he has the face-up jumper, and then he has the offensive creativity to create off the dribble now the threat of his mid-range pull-up along with the threat of his ability to ability to attack the rim makes him one of the best iso scorers in this class now the person that is probably at least statistically a little bit better than him but i don't think he has the same upside because of the whole ball handling is keegan murray now keegan murray out of iowa he was arguably the best player in college basketball last season, and his numbers back it up. Average 23.5 points, 8.7 rebounds, shot 55% from the floor, 39.8% from three. So he was giving out buckets however he wanted. Now, 
with Murray, he scored efficiently in a variety of ways. And although only 9% of his possessions came in isolation, he ranked in the top 80 percentile in the nation in scoring when it comes to isolation sets. So he does have some similarities to Bancaro as far as his touch around the rim. He has broad shoulders and he is able to take advantage of mismatches, which I think will help him in the NBA, especially when teams are switching. He is someone that I think if you have a smaller guard matched up against him, he can like punish smaller guards because he he's just able to to score and he's he's strong and he just has I wouldn't say he has like this really deep bag of tricks, but he's very effective when it when it comes to just putting the ball in the basket. Now, he's not the same player as far as Bancaro when it comes to creating creating off the dribble with advanced dribble moves, but he can attack the rim on basic straight line drives. He's more likely to drive through a player than blow by them with his, with his first step. Now, there are some concerns about how he'll fare against stronger NBA defenders, but I think that he has enough to where he can be at least an effective isolation score in the NBA. But unlike Ben Carroll... Murray prefers to ISO on the right side of the floor. So he's like the rare right-handed player that likes to isolate on the right side of the floor. And he likes to drive to the middle, which means he's driving with his left hand. Now, overall, he shot 44.7% in isolation. And one out of every four of his ISO possessions led to him shooting free throws. So it just shows his ability to score in isolation because not only can he, you know, score on the block or or shoot the mid range jumper, but he does generate fouls, which when you're generating fouls, you know, they lead to buckets. I want to say like, even though he shot 44.7% isolation, just a little bit under 50% of every ISO possession that he had led to points because, you know, you factor in the free throws. All right. The next player that is in my top three, as far as isolation is, Jaden Ivey. Now, Jaden Ivey is likely a top four pick. There's a chance that he could move into the top two or the top three, especially if the rumors that Oklahoma City has an interest in him are legit. Now, with with Ivey, the majority of his buckets come as the pick and roll ball handler or in transition. But he ranked as one of the top isolation scorers in this class. Shot 44.7%, which is the exact same as Keegan Murray. But he did most of his work in the paint while just blowing by defenders as if they were standing in quicksand. Ivy is so fast with the ball, and it's often that he doesn't even need a screen or need shake and bake moves to get by his man. I think that he's going to be maybe, out of all the guys in this class, could be the best isolation scorer in the NBA because I think he's going to stand out with NBA spacing. He played at Purdue with a lineup that featured a, tradi- a traditional big, sometimes two traditional bigs. They just did not have the best floor spacing. And he's a guy that at the end of the shot clock, you can spread the floor and say, hey, go go get me a bucket. And it's usually just his straight line drives. Now, he does shoot threes in isolation. And that's usually because the defender is so worried about his first step that he is kind of sagging back, which allows him to shoot a, you know, one dribble or step into an easy um, three point shot off the dribble. But Ivy also does get to the free throw line because he puts so much pressure on the rim with his speed. So I think that he is going to, again, be a an effective isolation scorer in the NBA. And those are my top three isolation scores as far as this NBA draft class. But when I return, I have a few other players that I want to talk about that you may not have thought were the top isolation scores in this class, but I want to talk to you about prize picks. Now, if you are looking for daily fantasy options for the NBA, then prize picks is the spot for you. You need to try the award-winning app, prize picks. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. I love it. And we know you will too. You can pick two to five players and an over or under on their projections and you can win up to 10 times on any entry and it is just you versus the projected numbers. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that easy. Prize picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. So use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. And Prize Picks offers a variety of options 
literally any prop that you can think of from point scored to rebounds, even steals. But what separates prize kicks, prize picks, <laughs> I don't know why I said prize kicks. Actually, there's a sneaker store that's not too far from me called Prize Kicks, and I collect sneakers. But prize picks allows mixed sport entries. So you can use the over on LeBron combined with the under on Tom Brady, and you can use that in the same entry. And prize picks just it's just not NBA. They have options for college basketball, college football, NFL, Major League Baseball, soccer, MMA, and more. Now, for a limited time only, Prize Picks has an exclusive no-brainer of an offer for all of our users. Users would get $50 free if a player in your first Prize Picks entry scores a single point, but in order to get it, you have to use the code NBA. That is right. This is an exclusive offer available to Locked On fans. Sign up today. Use the code NBA. You'll get $50 free if a player in your first prize picks entry scores a single point. All right now, we have an important favor to ask you. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about our listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. Now, this is your opportunity to tell us what you like and what you don't like about the Locked On Podcast. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take you very long. And everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. So take your audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey, and thank you for your help. All right, once again, you are listening to the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. I am Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board. All right, the next player that I want to discuss is Alondis Williams. Now, Williams is one of my guys all season. Now, when I say one of my guys, I don't know him personally, but he was one of the players that I've been high on and often spoke about how much I like his game. I personally believe that he is the best playmaker in this draft. He is an exceptional passer, has exceptional court vision. Now, he's a high-risk, high-reward passer, does have a lot of turnovers, but, I mean, the way he sees the floor and whips live, dribble, one-hand, cross-court skip passes, at least to me, is a thing of beauty. But he is also a good scorer. Now, if you don't know about Alondis Williams' past, he and I don't want to say past like it's negative, so, so uh, I'll start this over. Alonis Williams was a transfer from Oklahoma, played there for a few years, barely averaged 18 minutes per game, transfers to Wake Forest as a grad transfer, and ends up being ACC Player of the Year. I don't think there's anybody, maybe outside of his teammate Jake LaRavia, that did more for himself this year. And I still think he ends up being a second-round pick because he'll he'll be 23 on, on draft night, which is considered old for NBA rookies. And there are some concerns about his jumper, but there are no concerns about his ability to put the ball in the basket. He's a very good shot creator. He made over 51% of his attempts in isolation, and he's nearly impossible to stop one-on-one. I kind of see a little bit of Darren Williams in his game like he's a poor man Darren Williams and not the Darren Williams that finished his career in Dallas and in Cleveland I'm talking about Utah Jazz Brooklyn Nets Darren Williams now I don't think he is that on that level but I see like some similarities kind of like a poor man's D will he's 6'5 210 pounds strong he has excellent feet shifty handle and his combination of craftiness and creativity plus his athleticism, they're really on display when he is in isolation isolation situations. Ooh, that's kind of tough to say. Isolation situations. Now, the thing about Williams is when I first started watching his film, I didn't think he was like this great athlete. But then it's like out of nowhere, you see him make some incredible athletic plays, especially in the open court. I was at his pro day in Chicago and dude like literally jumps out of the gym. I'm I'm very high on Alonis Williams. Now one of the things that I also like about him, and you can you can tell I kind of have a, a a bias towards guys that can create their own shot, a bias towards crafty ball handlers. And Alonis loves to isolate at the top of the key. Overall, 
This season, he shot 66% at the rim, which ranked in the top 89 percentile in the nation. He was one of the best finishers at the rim in all of college basketball. Tough to stop downhill because, again, like I said, he has the combination of strength, athleticism, footwork, crafty handle, and he can also post up. He is a monster on the block, and he makes 65% of his post-up attempts. Now, again, I think he's going to end up being a second-round pick, but he is someone that I would draft because I think he can be a weapon. He is someone that if he can get the jump shot down, I know he's 23, you may not think that he has the highest upside because of his age, and you can take a point guard that is 19 years old and it's a four-year difference. I totally get that. But I think if he goes into the right situation, he could be a, a special piece because, again, he can pass, he can run an offense, he can score. He'll probably even look better with NBA spacing and he can exploit mismatches. You put a small guard on him, he can punish him by taking him to the block, and then if you send doubles, he can pass. But it all boils down to his jump shot. As far as isolation, only Paolo Bancaro scored more points in isolation situations out of the players that I've discussed or will discuss on this podcast. All right, the next player that I want to talk about is another one of my guys that I've been high on all season. Now, I'm not the type to toot my horn, but I'm going to go ahead and just toot it right here. I spoke about Ryan Rollins back in October as a sleeper pick in this year's draft. I went to watch him play before I took off to go to Europe. I went to like a preseason game. It was against like some, it might have been an NAIA school in Iowa, or D3, whatever. It was a preseason friendly. It doesn't even count on the record. But I went to watch him play in Toledo, and I left blown away by his potential I mean he is just one of the smoothest players in this draft he makes it look effortless and he just kind of has like this really easy going game where he can score his points without it looking like he's forcing points I mean he just knows how to let everything come to him and he's actually pretty young for his class and I've been so high on put it like this I was so high on Ryan Rollins after that preseason scrimmage that I did a podcast on him back in September, and I labeled him as this year's Jason Preston. If you remember, Jason Preston is also from the MAC, and he ended up being a second-round pick for the Clippers last year. But I've been high on Ryan Rollins since then, and since I was one of the... I guess the first people that kind of was on to him, I was able to meet him and spend some time with him in in Dallas where he was doing his pre-draft training. I actually had him as a guest on my podcast back in April. But when I first mentioned him as a first-round pick back in March, it was on a podcast with Chad Ford, and we were doing like a, a mock draft or a big board, and I had Ryan. Actually, it was a mock draft. I had Ryan as like the 28th or 29th pick, and Chad looked at me startled like, Who? And I don't know if he thought I was putting like one of my homeboys or my buddies in the mock draft, but I was dead serious that I thought Ryan Rollins was a first round pick back in March. I still think he's worthy of a first round pick today. And Ryan is one of my favorite players in isolation because he is so unorthodox with his game. He shot 44% in isolation his sophomore season. And he did most of his work on the left side of the floor. Now, what makes it so interesting is that his game is unorthodox, like I mentioned, is because he's right-handed, but he plays like a lefty. And so when he's on the left side of the floor, most right-handers, if they're on the left side of the floor, are probably looking to drive to the baseline. Well, Ryan likes the ball on the left side, and he loves to attack middle. And when he's when he attacked the middle in isolations on the left side of the floor, He shot 85% at the rim, which is crazy. And it is very, very unusual for a player to be so efficient and prefer to isolate with his offhand. I mean, there's not too many guys that do that, but that is why Ryan is one of my favorite players because he's not only is he underrated, but again, he is super unorthodox, smooth, makes it look easy. If you are a team with a first round pick, do not pass on Ryan Rollins. I actually have him going to Miami and my latest mock. All right, before I get into the last segment, let's talk about these new caramel brownies from Built Bar. Now, if you love a chocolate chewy brownie, 
Then you'll love a caramel brownie with caramel swirled on the top. It's so good. And what if I told you that this chewy, chocolate, delicious caramel brownie only has 17, it actually has 17 grams of protein. So you're in luck because the caramel brownie bars are now available at built.com right now. And you got to act fast because they are a fan favorite. So forget about dessert. These are better than dessert. Plus the macros are unreal. 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, only four grams of sugar. Now I would replace a regular brownie with a built bar caramel brownie in a heartbeat. I wouldn't even think twice about it. The best part is that the caramel brownie bars are covered with, you guessed it. If you've been listening to my podcast, you guessed it. You know, all built bars are covered with 100% real chocolate. Like for real built bars are again, 100% real chocolate. You don't have to sacrifice tasty for healthy. And with Built Bar, you can have both. And all of Built Bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides a ton of health benefits. There are a million reasons that you should try the Built Bars. But for now, let's just say the caramel brownie will rock your world. That is not an understatement. And with Built, tasty is the new healthy. Go to Built.com and get your box of caramel brownie bars right now. Go to Built.com. And if you use the promo code LOCKED15, you will get 15% off your order. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and you will get 15% off your order at built.com. All right, the last segment. The last segment, there are just two more guys that I wanted to talk about and they have two totally different styles. Now, these two players may not get drafted, but they are Within the range, I, I do think that there is a possibility that they could get drafted and could end up possibly being at the minimum two-way players. And one is Orlando Robinson. Now, Orlando Robinson is a center. Rarely do you see a center that is getting buckets in isolation, but Robinson is seven foot. He's skilled. He's a skilled back to the basket player, good passing instincts. He's uh, a guy that can make live dribble passes. Kind of has like this old school game with good touch around the rim. Can't put the ball on the floor and attack on straight line drives. He can face up, knock down open jumpers. Has a nice turnaround, fadeaway jumper. (laughs) And I do think he has the potential as a stretch big. But to me, he's a little stiff and mechanical. May not have the best fluidity. Has a tendency to kind of pick up his dribble and kind of drive out of control and not a great athlete. But for whatever reasons, with, with all that being said, one thing he can do is get buckets in isolation. Now, 10% of his possessions came in isolation, and he shot 47% from the floor. And again, it's not often that you see a center that likes to operate in, in as far as isolation situations, but he's a rare center that that likes to get his his baskets in isolation as opposed to post-ups now i don't think that would be his role in the nba at all but if we're talking about some of the best isolation scores in this class that are in you know my top 100 list orlando robinson is up there now the last player that i want to talk about is somebody that you may not be familiar with and it is aj green from Northern Iowa. Now, I'm a Cincinnati Bengals fan. When I think of A.J. Green, I'm thinking of A.J. Green, the wide receiver, formerly of the Cincinnati Bengals. But A.J. Green is 6'4", 190-pound guard from Northern Iowa, averaged a little bit under 19 points per game. And what's funny is just last week, I was talking to a prospect, and he came from a workout with a team. And I always like to ask the guys, how did it go, who was there, so on and so on. And so the player mentioned that he thought he was the second best player at this particular workout. So I was like, okay, well, who was the best player? He says, man, I've never heard of this dude, but his name is A.J. Green, and he was given buckets. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm familiar with the name. And then maybe a day or so later, it came out that A.J. Green had decided to stay in the draft. Now, if you're not familiar with A.J. Green, he is an isolation score. He's a shooter. Right. So you look at his field goal percentage. He shot, I would say, like in the high 30s from three. But he takes a high degree of difficulty shots and 16 percent of his isolation or 16 percent of his possessions came in isolation. So if you break it down, Paolo Bancaro, 20 percent of his ice. 
20% of his possessions come in isolation. Then there's A.J. Green with 16%. Behind him, Alondis Williams with 14%. And then Ryan Rollins, Orlando Robinson, Keegan Murray, and Jaden Ivey all are at about 10 and 9% of their possessions in isolation. So A.J. Green is second amongst the guys that I mentioned as far as isolation possessions. And when A.J. Green is in isolation, he is looking to shoot threes. Now, the field goal percentage is not great, only 35% in isolation. But once you add in the adjusted field goal percentage, you have to respect the numbers. He is what I call a three-point shot maker. Not on the level of Trey Mann, um, Hugo Besson from um, you know New Zealand Breakers, who I think could be a second-round pick, is in that same mold, but... I'm talking about A.J. Green, a guy that loves to create his own offense and shooting threes off the dribble. I don't know if he gets drafted. I don't know. But I do see him as somebody that is going to be on a two-way contract. His shot selection is, it could be a little bit better, but I, th- I just think that's who he is. And I think once he gets to the NBA or even in the G League, he'll have such a reduced role that the shot percentages will be a little bit better. So, This is probably one of the first places that you heard the name A.J. Griffin watch out. I think that he could be somebody that, if he doesn't get drafted, I see him as somebody that signs a two-way, but also somebody that will look really good in Summer League. All right, thanks again for making this NBA Big Board podcast a success. Shout out to each and every person that has listened to the podcast. Now, check out the Locked On NBA podcast. We are down to the last... I was going to give a total, but if it goes seven, we're down to like the last five games of the NBA Finals. And the Locked On NBA podcast has you covered for all the analysis from the finals. They started with the first jump ball of the playing tournament. They will be there until the last buzzer of the 2022 20, yeah, 2022 NBA season. I'm already thinking ahead of myself. I was great to say 2022-2023. Well, once again, thank you so much. This is Rafael Barlow signing out, and I am out.